Hello everyone and welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. Um, also on YouTube, ddarko2012 and 2013. I'm going to be covering the economy in this a set of videos. I hope you enjoyed the little exclusive on Russia and North Korea uh, yesterday. So we'll talk about the economy in this video. You will not believe what some people are willing to do for a paycheck these days. But it goes on here, it says that um, desperate times call for desperate measures. We've not seen this kind of desperation for jobs in America since the Great Depression in the 1930s. It says what some people are willing to put up with just to bring home a paycheck these days will totally shock you. It says here, for example, would you slaughter dogs all day long enough, uh, though you really are a dog lover? Would you personally train your repla replacement from China, even though you knew he was about to take your job? Would you trade sex for a job? There are people out there actually doing all these things and worse. Every night in America, millions upon millions of people roll around endlessly in their beds and stare in their ceilings or at their ceilings for hours because they can't sleep. They're sick to their stomachs because their money is gone and nobody will hire them. They can't provide even the basics for their families and they feel worthless. So unemployment can be absolutely soul crushing and it can suck the life right out of you. It says here things were supposed to be better by now, but they aren't. It says here I like personal stories because they tell us things that all of the economic statistics in the world never could. There's millions of Americans that have had their lives totally turned upside down uh, by this rigged engineered economy. It says here they feel abandoned and worthless, and many of them feel as though their life is no longer worth living. So it goes on here and it says a 61-year-old woman begging for a job, and it goes on here and says I sent out close to 500 resumes. Most uh, never were even acknowledged, and those that were, I was told I was overqualified. When you would press them, they would fumble, but I was sure my age was part of the overqualified, probably for insurance and that. It says here, the thoughts of wanting life to be over were with me every day. I wanted to, I wanted the horror to stop, and it says every time I would hear of the unemployment rates, I would cry, uh, what about me? So at this point, she was so desperate, she took a job where she was making the decision about what dogs to slaughter in the ad animal shelter. So... After she was fired for not being aggressive enough and killing off dogs, she started endlessly sending out resumes once again. It says nobody wants to hire her, and she uh, essentially feels like an old lady begging for a job. It says here that um, if you knew your company was going to tear down your factory and send your job to China, would you personally train your repl replacement? It says that is what a whole bunch of workers in Illinois are doing right now. Uh, goes on here with this woman and the 170 other men and women in Freeport, Illinois. There's a brutal twist to the torture. It says here that um, Borman 52 and the other workers of a soon-to-be shuttered car parts plant are personally training the Chinese workers who will replace them. It's a surreal experience, they say. For months, they have watched their plant being dismantled and shipped to China piece by piece as they show teams of Chinese workers uh, how to do the jobs they have dedicated their lives to. And there's a question for you. Remember back in, what, 2009, I believe it was? 2008, do you remember when the U.S. taxpayers bailed out the auto industry? It says, since the auto industry bailed out, approximately 70% of all GM vehicles have been built outside the United States. So it says the insanity has gotten to such a level that Americans simply cannot take it anymore. And it says here, here's an example. It says, on the last day of the job, Kevin Flanagan, after clearing out a some personal effects, putting them in boxes in the back of his Ford Ranger. He left the building where he'd worked for seven years, sat in his front seat of the pickup truck on the lower level of the company garage, placed a 12-gauge shotgun to his head and pulled the trigger. He was 41 years old and a computer programmer. They'd been working his entire life until his job was shipped overseas. It says here that this outsourcing has been one of the country's few growth industries. And as for the American workers eliminated along the way, they are just collateral damage. And of course, you got trading sex for a job. Scrubbed, a photo of President Obama removed just days after book exposes agenda to eliminate the suburbs. So a photo of President Obama was suddenly pulled from the website of the group Building One America, whose goals were documented extensively in Stanley Kurtz's book, Spreading the Wealth, How Obama is Robbing the Suburbs to Pay for the Cities. So it says here, the photo of Obama and his mentor appears to be completely gone from the Building One America website. Along with that, the photo appears to have been completely scrubbed by Building One America. A Google search finds no record of it anywhere but Breibart.com and other conservative websites that featured the image. And the middle classes are driven to drink by the recession. It says here, 
They also report rise in anxiety and abortions. So more Britons are turning to drink to cope with the recession, according to doctors. So these doctors say tough times mean their patients are drinking more, exercising less, and suffering more anxiety. And the middle classes are particularly hard hit because there's a war on the middle class. One in six family doctors also believe that patients have asked for an abortion because of financial worries. So they're talking about uh, exercising less. And I remember this article here. A case of lazy itis, not bothering to exercise, should be treated as a medical condition. So they would prescribe supported progressive exercise if inactivity was treated as a medical condition. So yeah, I mean, people that are used to working every day and stuff like that, uh, when they have nothing to do, I doubt uh, some 50-year-old guy is going to you know, start jogging or something like that. But, um, you know, their body, your health is probably the, the best way you can prepare, you know. Um, when you go back to here, you know, says we are moving the most difficult times that any of us have ever seen and if you do nothing to prepare yourself you'll be very sorry so you know the past couple of years i've been trying to work on my health as best as i could and can because i i don't really have much to to fall back on so except ex except for my health so i guess what i'm saying is is you know just trying to do some kind of exercise is good and beneficial um the other thing too remember i just covered in yesterday's video about the birth rates going down and and uh, part of it is because people can't financially afford it, and they're also going to abortion clinics. So it's just a, it's a sad, tragic story that people uh, have to resort to do that, doing that. But I know, and anxiety is another thing. Um, I just talked to a friend recently, and uh, you know, he was telling me about how all of a sudden he's getting these panic attacks. You know, and uh, ever since the probably towards the end of the, my military service, I started to get these uh, panic attacks, especially when I was driving and anxiety and stuff like that pretty bad um, throughout my body you know and um, you know the best thing I found was just meditating uh, you don't have to get all crazy about it and stuff like that but just find your own routine and the most important thing is breathing just breathing slowly in and out and stuff like that deep breaths and that'll help instead of taking the pills I mean the nurse even told my friend if I were you I wouldn't take those pills because I gave him Xanax and stuff like that that's not the answer right because he's worried about work he's got a family he's got a kid and uh you know just like my other friend he don't know if the postal service is going to cut his job you know this other guy he drives two hours i think it's an hour and a half to go to work uh, uh most of the time so it's just like it's pretty bad and he's i think it was a union sheet metal worker we we're talking about firing and stuff like that you're fired how do you feel Bosses told they will have to make sure staff are happy when a redundancy is on the cards. Companies may have to assess the psychological health of their staff when considering redundancies under EU plans. Said here that it's angered business leaders already struggling to keep up with regulation red tape from Europe. The new directive would also force bosses to examine the impact of job cuts on the community. So this MP says here, this is a time when we want to be doing everything we can to remove the burdens on our businesses so they can feel free to make some profits grow and hopefully create some jobs. Next up, Coles and Woolworths deliberately killing competition. This is in uh, Australia, of course, ABC. It says here that our new report by Master Grocers Australia has accu accused the supermarket giants of deliberately killing off their smaller competitors. So, you know, it says here it represents smaller operators. Uh, the Coles and Woolworths are saturating the market and opening oversized supermarkets to squeeze out local competition. Wow, it says here in Australia about $8 of every $10 spent on groceries ends up in the tills at uh, Coles or Woolworths. And it says the Australian grocery market is one of the most concentrated and con consolidated in the world and local retailers in towns like uh, Toowoomba in Queensland struggle to deal with the competition from huge retail chains. So. I remember when I was there, I was surprised there was always Woolworths everywhere, you know, in the Northern Territory and 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 then the the East Coast and that. It's like Woolworths everywhere. And I'm like thinking, like, didn't they like die in the U.S.? They're not even there anymore. But um, it says here, Papa John's Obamacare stance spurs social media attack. So a couple of weeks after the brouhaha of Chick-fil-A CEO comments on same-sex marriage prompted a national debate, reflected in social media, i.e., was just basically attacks. Um, I remember I mentioned the guy, their spokesman actually had a heart attack at, during all of this. It says here, another fast food chain, Papa John's, has dipped its toe in the red state, blue state divide. I think it has to do with economics here. But uh, the John Schneider from Papa John's Pizza said Obamacare would raise the price of pizza somewhere between 11 cents to 14 cents. It says we're, it says we're not supportive of Obamacare like most businesses in our industry. So it says here, on average, response to the brand on social media has been negative. 
It says here on July 29th to talk about the brand was 77% positive and 23% negative by August 5th. Um, the discussion was 48% positive and 52% negative. You know, and um, I don't really know what to say about it, but uh, it's just the, it, the beat goes on and the beat goes on, I guess. You know, if if you make comments in, in social media and that, you will be attacked by mostly liberals that are on the Internet. So next up, we have taxpayers on the hook for $10 billion as drought ravages crops. So the crop farmers are on track to record about $18 billion in losses thanks to this year's historically nasty drought. It goes on here, says the federal government is on the hook for $10 billion of that thanks to the heavy subsidized federal crop insurance program, the Washington Post reports. We want to talk about how insurance is a fraud uh, and how the farming industry is completely controlled. Um, though it says here farmers, because we know, you know the government pays them to actually not grow certain crops and stuff like that. Though farmers technically buy the policies from private insurance insurers, the federal government guarantees those insurers against losses. It also pays 60% of the farmers' premiums, which this year amounted to an extra $9 billion. Let's not forget about um, the federal government just bought up what is it, like $150 million worth of food from the farmers to give them cash in their hands, quick cash, right? And it's going straight to the Department of Defense. Uh, beer tent owner Obama visit cost me $25,000. The Iowa State Fair vendor not pleased with presidential appearance. It goes on here, and uh, Obama came in prompting chance of four more years and four more beers at the Bud Tent where he offered to buy a round, but the, but the owner of the tent said uh, he was less than pleased with the visit. It seems that the tent was shut down while Obama was inside. Visitors were allowed in only after being screened by the Secret Service since the tent effectively stopped operating during a time of day when business should have been booming. The third-generation owner uh, estimates he lost about $25,000 in sales. Factory owners, federal prisoners are stealing our business. So it goes on here and it says that Unicor is a government-run enterprise that employs over 13,000 inmates at wages as low as 23 cents an hour to make goods for the Pentagon and other federal agencies, i.e. CIA front companies possibly. With some exceptions, Unicor gets first dibs on federal contracts over private companies as long as the bid is comparable in price, quantity, delivery. In other words, if Unicor wants a contract, it gets it. And that makes Wilson and other small business owners very angry. So we are aware of the Army having a program too for you know, inmate labor. So it says here, Unicor, also known as Federal Prison Industries, like that, is part of the U.S. Bureau of Prisons. It's been preparing inmates for jobs after they get out since 1931. In other words, exploiting uh, these poor bastards are usually in there for victimless crimes. This isn't the first time, right? This isn't the first time talking about federal prisoners uh, being used in businesses. Apple pickers seeking prison pay turned away. So says the state of Washington is getting paid good money, $22 per hour per worker, to provide prison labor in Washington's apple orchards. But it says here the experienced farm workers willing to and eager to pick apples for decent pay are being told they must work for minimum wage or else take a hike. Yeah, prison labor works for Colorado growers. So they say that it's because they toughened immigration laws in 05 and a lot of migrant workers told them they wouldn't be coming back. Yeah, so let's not hire just regular people and paying them a living wage so they can feed their families. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and hire prisoners. And uh, again, on immigration crackdown, it says here these onion farmers in Georgia turn to prisoners for harvest help. And you want to make sure you got a good uh, prison inmate population for work, right? Mississippi County runs school-to-prison pipeline. It says here that uh, they have operated a school-to-prison pipeline that violates constitutional rights of juveniles by incarcerating them for alleged school disciplinary infractions, some as minor as defiance. It says here students the most affected by the system are African-American children and children with disabilities. I've talked about the Texas uh, Truancy Task Force before. You have police haul missing pupils from their beds and drive to cut truancy. And this girl, remember her, an honor student at Texas high school, was jailed for missing school. And just like nationally, California prisons are staying uh, torturously overcrowded. Now remember the U.S. Army's operating concept 2016 to 2028. It's a U.S. Army tactical manual describing how to control domestic insurrection. Well, they mentioned tea parties. That was the hypothetical situation. Tea party evolves to achieve state policy victories. So they are watching you. It says here because you're a threat. Gunman opens fire at conservative family research council building. So now they're taking the psyops here. To a, to a conservative pro-life and pro-traditional marriage organization. Now, the Social Security Administration is putting in a request for these hollow-point ammunition. 
Remember this? Uh, for unpaid college loans, feds dock Social Security. Uncle Sam's coming for their benefits. Which is why Homeland Security exercise startles locals at a Social Security office.